In today's lecture, we will see the network performance. As usual, we will start the session with the outcomes. Upon the completion of this session, the learner will be able to. Outcome number one, we will know the importance of network performance. Outcome number two, we will understand what is bandwidth. Outcome number three, we will understand what is throughput. And the last outcome, we will know about latency, which is also called as delay and its components. We will move on to the network performance. Why do we need network performance? One important issue in networking is the performance of the network. How good is it? Not only in computer network, even an individual is assessed based on his performance. So performance is very important not only in individual's life, but also in computer network. Then how this network performance is measured? The network performance is measured in the following fundamental ways. Number one, the bandwidth. Number two, the throughput. And number three, the latency or the delay. We will see one by one in today's lecture. First, let's start with an analogy. This analogy is for bandwidth and throughput. Imagine a highway which is designed to transmit 1000 cars per minute from one end to another. However, if there is congestion on road, this figure may be reduced to 100 cars per minute. The highway is actually capable enough to handle 1000 cars per minute, but in reality due to congestion, it may handle only 100 cars per minute. Let's now see what can we derive from this analogy to computer network. In the highway analogy, the bandwidth is 1000 cars per minute, but due to congestion, the throughput is 100 cars per minute. This is the capability, but this is the reality. Let's start with the first fundamental way of measuring the network performance, the bandwidth. I'm going to give the informal definition as well as the formal definition. Informally, bandwidth can be defined as the maximum amount of data that can be transmitted per second. And formally, it, the bandwidth of a network is given by the number of bits that can be transmitted over the network in a certain period of time. We have two kinds of network, one is the wired network and the other one is the wireless network. So bandwidth is applicable for both the network. In wired network, we will measure it in bits per second. In wireless network, it is measured in hertz because in wireless, it is dealing with frequencies. Firstly, we will see bandwidth in bits per second. The bandwidth means it is the capability. If we are deploying gigabit ethernet for our network, then this gigabit ethernet can provide a bandwidth of 1 gigabits per second. It means per second, 1 gigabits of data can be transmitted over this channel. So the bandwidth here is 1 gigabits per second. As I already mentioned, bandwidth can also be for wireless. So in wireless, it is in Hertz. A range of frequencies used to transmit signals which is measured in Hertz and that's the definition of bandwidth in terms of Hertz. We are done with bandwidth. Now let's move on to the throughput. Informally, it's the actual amount of data that passes through the medium. And formally, the throughput is a measure of how fast we can actually send the data through a network. So the word actual says this is the reality. The bandwidth means it's the capability and the throughput means it's the reality and it's the actual data that is being sent. Although bandwidth in bits per second and throughput seem the same, actually they are different. How they are different? A link may have a bandwidth of B BPS, that is B bits per second, but we can only send T BPS through this link. T BPS means T bits per second. So in this example where this B is the bandwidth and T is the throughput, always throughput will be lesser than the bandwidth because the bandwidth is the capability and throughput is the reality. We will see more about throughput. We may have a link with a bandwidth of 1 megabits per second, but the devices connected to the end of the link may handle only 200 kilobits per second. This means that we cannot send more than 200 kilobits through this link. It is obvious, though the bandwidth is 1 megabits per second, but the device that is connected to the link is capable of handling only 200 kilobits per second. So obviously, this T, that is this 200 kilobits per second, will be lesser than this B, that is 1 megabits per second. Now let's see the last fundamental way of measuring the network performance, the delay, which is also called as latency. The latency or delay defines 
how long it takes for an entire message to completely arrive at the destination from the time the first bit is sent out from the source. Let's assume there is a source computer and there is a destination computer. When the source computer is placing its data on the channel, the time it takes from the first bit is sent out from the source to the time it takes for the last bit that is consumed by the destination. So this entire time we call as the latency. Basically, latency is made up of four components. They are the transmission delay, the propagation delay, the queuing delay and finally the processing delay. And latency is the summation of transmission delay, propagation delay, queuing delay and processing delay. Latency or delay is one of the important topics in computer networks, particularly in gate examinations or any analytical or competitive examinations, this delay plays a vital role. I request you to watch my next lecture on the delays where you will get insights about transmission delay, propagation delay, queuing delay and processing delay. And that's it guys. I hope now you know the importance of network performance. You understood bandwidth and throughput. We also know the latency or delay and its components. I hope you liked the lecture and thank you for watching.